Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak. We want to welcome those of you all who are joining us today at Masjid Muhammad, of course, here in Jacksonville, Florida. Beautiful day uh, here in the Sunshine State. Those of you all who are joining us on YouTube, Facebook Live, StreamYard uh, for this morning prayer and lecture for the Eid al-Adha, the greater of the two Eids. And we are especially uh, honored to have with us our community uh, on American Muslim 360. Take my mask off here. AM 360. So Kareem Hamid and all the believers across the country who are joining us this morning on uh, American Muslim 360, we say to you, E. Mubarak, to my friend, Imam Muhammad Abdullah in the Birmingham Islamic community in Birmingham, Alabama. So we're going to prepare for our prayer. But those of you all who are new and to our Christian viewers and listeners and Jews, Jewish friends and listeners, shalom to you. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Now, this occasion uh, of our prayer is not require a the than a call for prayer. So our Muedans will not be making a call to prayer today. And there is no ikama for the Eid prayer. Following the traditions of Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon our Prophet, when the prayer is ready, which we're getting ready to do now, I will say stand, and we will stand up for the prayer. Can you all please turn your phones off? Thank you all very much so we don't hear all those little signals and sounds. Um, <clears throat> then once we stand for the prayer, there are two rakahs, two units of prayer, like Jummah. And it's the reverse of the Jummah where we start with the khutbah, lecture, then make salat. For the Eid, we start with the prayer. Then after the prayer, we have short khutbah, which concludes our Eid. And then here in the community, I said yesterday we weren't having any food, but the sisters brought some, some uh, zaki, as you see, they brought some, uh, some little fruit cups, all right? Now, those of you all on Facebook that's joining us live, or if you're in your communities and you're here and you haven't paid the Southern car, because we're not slaughtering an animal, you can exchange it for contribution. So it's $10 here locally per family member. You can do that before the prayer. Same to you all out there. If you want to make your contributions, as some of you uh, are doing online, you can go to our website, www.alislam, A-L-Islam, Worldwide Ministry, dot com. You can make your contributions online. <clears throat> and if you'd like to mail it in, you can mail it in P.O. Box 3204, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, 32206, Al-Islam, Worldwide Ministry, okay? And that's $10 per family uh, member. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that. <clears throat> And congratulations to all of our hajis and hajjas, male and female, who have made, been blessed to make the once-in-a-lifetime trip for the hajj. And that's what we are commemorating and observing today, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, which is the day of the sacrifice. And on the day of sacrifice, if you were there in Saudi Arabia, there'd be uh, stoning the big Satans, clipping the hair, a lot of rituals and also the uh, Eid prayers. Okay, so let us stand. Now, we're gonna, in the two rakahs, the first one, now some schools of thoughts are different and it's okay. They'll make seven takbir, glorifications of God. Imam W.D. Muhammad, God grand the high station in paradise, say we make five in the first rakah because five comes before seven in chronology. So in the first rakah, we'll make five tag beer, and then we will make the first rakah. When we stand up for the second one, we'll make seven tag beers, and then we will make the second rakah, conclude the prayer, and we would have a short khutbah on this sacred day of Eid al-Adha. So let us stand now for prayer. Those of you all on Facebook, YouTube, joining us, and even if you're on the West Coast, this is Eid day. So you can join us for the prayer. This is not Jummah. 
and those of you all on, online with us, American Muslim 360 and the Birmingham Islamic Center, and our regular listeners on the Juma Conference line. Okay? <clears throat> so we'll make our intentions. I'll make it for all of us. Our Nia intentions. Salat al Eid al Adha. Two rakas for Allah, Lord of all the systems of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahi Rahman al Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladhina Namta Alayhim, Ghayr al-Maqdubi Alayhim, Walad Dalin. Amin. Sabihis me rabbikel a'la. Alladhi khalaqa fasawa. Walladhi qaddara fahada. Walladhi akrajal mara'a. Fajalahu gutha an ahwa. سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يقف ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذخر من يقشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤذرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين نمت عليهم غير المقضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Ameen. Wadduha. Wal-layli idha sajah. 
ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعتيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك آئلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقحر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فهدث الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر God is the greater God is the greater Allah is the greater لا إله إلا الله there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and to him belongs all the praise Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim with the last name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer we greet all of you assalamu alaikum that is may the peace that only God almighty can give you be upon you we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayers and peace be upon our prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ba'd and what follows thereafter of this excellent salutation. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here this, this morning, as all of you around the world, uh, in the United States of America and around the world, joining us today for the second of our great celebrations. And this is called Eid al-Adha. And Eid al-Adha, you see many meanings Assalamu alaikum, brothers. You all have wonderful Eid, Eid Mubarak to our brothers. And Eid Mubarak out there, blessed Eid to all of you all that are joining us in the United States and around the world, Muslims all over the world. We say blessed Eid to you, our Juma conference line at American Muslim 360. Eid Mubarak to all of you. This is the greater, not going to keep you long. This is the greater of the two Eids. This is the second for the non-Muslims who are joining us uh, to understand what we are doing in conjunction now with Muslims all over the world. That's important. Two billion Muslims. This is not a local celebration, though we're celebrating locally. This is not a statewide celebration, though we're in the state of Florida. 
It is not a national celebration, though we're in our nation, America. This is global. You understand that? This is a worldwide celebration, worldwide holiday, sacred holiday for all Muslims all over the world. And Allah has blessed us in the United States of America, alhamdulillah, because of the figures in our past, W.D. Farad, God forgive me, sin and grand paradise. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah forgive him his sin and grand paradise. Uh, starting this community in America, the largest Muslim community, single community, uh, ethnic community, if you can call it that, in America. We're the largest numbers, African Americans. And his son, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Imam Walidudin Muhammad, guiding us, educating us, bringing us, putting us on the path that is straight. They call it the Surat al-Mustaqim with all Muslims all the world so that we can celebrate Ramadan like all the Muslims all over the world, have Eid al-Fitr, and then celebrate the commemoration of the sacrifice of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son, both Ishmael and Abraham and Ishmael both willing to sacrifice their life for God and God saying to them, no, no need to do that. The willingness to do it is enough. Yeah, the willingness to do it is enough. So God said to Abraham, the patriarch, father for all the great monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Al-Islam, consider, and Muslims, consider Abraham as the father. Allah calls him Imam Lil Alameen. Imam. He's called Imam first. Uh, I don't know if you all knew that or not, Muslims. But Abraham, Ibrahim in the Quran, is called Imam before Muhammad the Prophet. So Muhammad the Prophet follows him and say, Imam, leader, father for all the nations, all the world. His model, his example. Abraham. Yes. Okay. So this celebration, Eid al-Adha, is to commemorate that. But when does it take place? It takes place on the 10th of the month of Hajj, dhul Hijjah. And it is connected now with Hajj, the 10th day of the Hajj. Okay? So the pilgrims on this day on Hajj, Make a the biha sacrifice, the Pakistanis they say Qurbani sacrifice. This day is also called Yom Nahar. I mentioned this in Juma yesterday. The day of killing, slaughter, but killing what? Meat. But the meat is symbolic. That's why if you don't have an animal to sacrifice, you sacrifice the cost of that animal. And it says, no, you sacrifice them. Because really what you're sacrificing is the selfishness and the greed inside of this animal. Huh? The human body, the animal, right? They consider us mammals, like the animal. So we're sacrificing that, getting rid of the spirit of selfishness and the spirit of greed. All right? So the pilgrims on Hodge. And I won't go through all those rituals because I don't want to keep you all day here. Okay. So let us begin reading from the Quran now, our Quranic verse for the day. From the chapter titled Al-Hajj, the 22nd chapter of the Quran, the 34th verse. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. God the mighty spoke the truth. Translating now, Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation, the 11th edition, 2009, published. 
to every nation, every community, every people did we appoint for them their celebration. Now they translate this Mansakin uh, rites of sacrifice. Well, if Allah is saying every people in every nation, I have a question for this translation now. Does every nation offer a sacrifice for their holidays? No. So that shouldn't be translated. And of course, they have sacrifice in parentheses. So if you're reading something, I'm talking to the non-Arabic speakers now in America and in the world. If you're reading something in English in parentheses, it's saying it's not there in Arabic. This is the commentator's way of giving their tafsir understanding of what they're reading. But I'm reading Arabic. And I'm telling you there's nothing here that says sacrifice. Allah says, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةِ To every people, every nation. Now this is this verse, here's a, I'm going to give you a hadith, and here's the support for the hadith. The prophet, he says, every nation have their sacred holidays, their ceremonial holidays. Ceremonial holidays, sacred holidays. He didn't say every nation have their days of sacrifice. No, ceremonial holidays, i.e., for example, Christians have Easter, Christmas, right? We just had in these nations, this nation, the 4th of July, a month before that, Memorial Day. And for us in June, actually uh, in June, we had Juneteenth, right? Father's Day, Mother's Day. These are holidays. And actually it's one for every month in the United States of America so you can spend that money, keep the commerce going. Really, they have one for every day of the month. Used to be only a few. Now they say, oh, let's get this money out of them. So they say, you all, you African Americans, y'all want to write? Y'all want a ceremony a day too? How about y'all have a uh, Martin Luther King celebration? God rest his soul. That's a money day uh, for spending. They encourage you to spend, commercializing. And they say, oh, y'all want to remember Juneteenth? And we should. Say, all right, go out and shop for Juneteenth. It's money. So in this commercialized nation, those of you all around the world, you may not have these issues we have in America, but everything in America is driven by the almighty dollar. That's what they call it, all right? We just call it currency, Muslim. But it's powerful now. And the more of it you have in America, the more power you have in America. And it buys power, political power. <clears throat> to every people did we appoint their ceremonial days. Now you understand that. That they might remember and celebrate the name of God. Now here it is for us as Muslims. The name of God over the sustenance, Thanksgiving Day. Think of Thanksgiving as a holiday. And the people pray on Thanksgiving. God, thank you for this food and the meals and the gathering of the family members in Christmas. The name of God over the sustenance he gave them from animals. Fit, now listen, animals fit to be consumed. <clears throat> All animals are not fit for food. Dear people, y'all, you all get upset out there. I'm not talking to the rest of the world. I'm talking to America right now. I'm speaking to the world. But in this example I'm about to give, I don't think you all have this problem that we have in America. Dear African-American brothers and sisters and others in America, chitlins are not fit for food. Hate to spoil your meal if you got that on the plate today. The smell of it tell you it's not fit for food. Certain things you're not supposed to eat. But remember the antidote. You are what you eat. Physically and also mentally. So now Muhammad the prophet says, every verse of the Quran, there's a clear meaning, explicit. 
and there's one that's implied. Okay, so I gave you the explicit meaning of this. Every animal not fit for food, giving commentary of the language of Imam Muhammad, of the verse I'm reading from. Every knowledge is not fit to be consumed. Hence the dua of Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, where he said, O oh Allah, save me from knowledge that is not useful and has no utility. That's the animal that's not fit for food. That's the intellectual animal that's not fit for food. That's the knowledge that's not fit to be consumed. And what did Christ Jesus say? As a man, he's speaking of the women two sisters, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, in the chapter I read in the first Raka, there's a verse, Allah, chapter 87, verse 9, that says, For that kir in nefa'ati dikra. So think. That's what Christ Jesus said. As a man think, so is he in his heart, in his mind. So Allah says in the Quran to the prophet, think, for surely thinking benefits the thinker. And God doesn't leave us wondering about what to think on because in the chapter, al an kabut the spider, chapter 29, yes, people, we have a chapter titled The Spider. So to bring to our mind, don't get caught up in the traps of the spider web of mysteries and intrigue. You get caught up in that web. And God says in the Quran, the spider's web that you fascinated with and all this mystery stuff and all these intrigues you got is a flimsy house. It can't stand up in the world of mankind in the real world. That's what God is telling us. So the flimsiest of houses is the spider's house. So why do you want to build your life and ideas and philosophy on mysterious, flimsy things that has no long-lasting stability in the world of mankind? But in that chapter, Allah says, of thinking now, talking about animals fit for food, knowledge fit to consume. Walidhikrullahu Akbar. I'm on the Eid al The return to greater enlightenment. Eid al doesn't mean return to a celebration or slaughtering animals. There's nothing in the statement that says slaughter animal. Eid means to return. Something that happens over and over, recurring. Al-Adha, second chapter that I read. Doha, the morning light. And we're still in the time of the morning light. When this light starts moving, this has to be over. But I'm going to be over before it gets out of here. Because we, we have to give this lecture and the prayer while the sunlight is still in the cool of the morning. That's when the prophet prayed the Eid prayer. But in the chapter of Doha, the glorious morning light. Now, you all out there who know Arabic, if I take the Aleph superlative A and put it in front of Doha, it becomes Adha. Brighter light. Eid al-Adha, Imam Muhammad's translation, return to greater enlightenment. So all of this, all of those rituals on the Hajj are designed for the elucidation, big word, for enlightenment, for education of the human mind. So if you're just running around the Kaaba seven times and you didn't learn anything, you got some good exercise. If you're running through Safa and Mawa, you didn't learn. And I don't have time to go through all these symbols, but there are meanings for all of these things. Seven, seven is consistent throughout the Hajj. Eh? How many days in the week for everybody all over this world? Seven. How many elevations the prophet made in the ascension? Seven. 
It's a number of perfection and completion. So whatever we are learning, the lessons, the disciplines on Hajj, we should apply them seven days a week, every day in our life. Seven tawafs running around the cops. Tawaf means circumambulation uh, or to run around. Safa and Mawa, seven. All right. You didn't learn anything from that? Struggle, running between the two hills. Knowledge, as Imam Muhammad said, you, you're trying to figure things out. You run back and forward in your mind, back and forward in your mind, back and forward in your mind till the water springs up from your consciousness. Yeah, the water came up at the hill, H-E-E-L, the hill of Ishmael. Out of the dry desert, the water came up. But it didn't come up till she prayed and she ran seven times. So if you're running between those two hills, and I've done it, some of Hajis have done it and Hajis, but you should get from that, I have to struggle. I got to run. And man and people get nothing but what they run for, like Hagar ran between Safa and Ma with a Sa'i. She did a Sa'i, a running. We have to do a Sa'i, struggling, running all the time. And before you start the physical Sa'i, you have to start the mental Sa'i. You got to figure it out. Back and forward in the mind, seven times till you get it. Seven is that it, you might get it the first time, but to completion. Once you get it, it's still seven because it's completed. So if you got it, so you got let me figure this out, figure this out in your mind. So you run back and forward with ideas, trying to see, trying to get the clarity on it, trying to understand it. And then, ah, you have that aha moment, they call it, where the water, the clarity springs up from the mind. See, enlightenment, food fit to eat. Man gets nothing but what he struggles for and the fruit of his striving, he'll see it. All right. So we should only sacrifice animals that's fit for food. So in the dabiha, and then it depends on what you sacrifice. We don't sacrifice pigeons. No, too small. We don't even sacrifice a chicken. And the animal picture now, too small. No, no, no. Bring the real meat. We, we, we Muslims. You know, we, we don't, we don't need chicken feed, milk for babies, meat for the learned. Isn't that what the Bible says? Scripture, not our book. Our book said, no. Feed the people the meat. They get, get you a goat, a lamb. They got to chew on that meat right there now. That's a little more to chew on. And look what Allah says. Let me keep reading. He gave them sustenance, animals fit for food. But your God is one God. Submit then your wills to him in Al-Islam. Sacrifice your mind for the cause of God. And give good news to those who come with a humble heart in a humble spirit. What's the good news? Verse 35. Give the good news to those who come with a lowly spirit and a humble heart. To so those whose hearts, when they hear God's name mentioned, the heart softens up, filled with love. It says fear, no. Filled with love, respect for God, who show patient perseverance over their struggles, when they have hard times. When they have difficult times, they show patience. Wasabirina, they stay patient, like Job. And Job's wife came to him and said, Oh, you, he had all this pestilence and hardship going on in the prophet Job. Ayub in the Quran, Job in the Bible. And he was having such a difficult time in his life. And God was testing him with hardship. And the wife who had no faith. She said, Job, I'm paraphrasing, 
Why don't you give up this God, this foolishness of worshiping God? He's not helping you. Look how hard your life is. Look how much struggle you're going through. And isn't that what they told our ancestors in America? You all believe in God. He left you in slavery. Look, he ain't helping you off of the Mr. Jones plantation and Mr. Brown's plantation. You couldn't see. We couldn't see. I'm speaking in the past now. Ancestors couldn't see what God was allowing and preparing and why he was allowing and why he was allowing to happen what happened. He didn't cause it, but he allowed it. Meaning he didn't stop it. So if he didn't stop it, he allowed it. But he had a plan in mind on the back end. Hence what I said in the chapter in this recitation. What I have for you all in the future is much better for you than the present. But what I have for you, you need to be conditioned and shaped and formed by this difficulty that you don't want, but it's going to prepare you and your generations for leadership in the world down the city. And you would qualify for leadership on the world stage because of what you've been through and what you survived. Nobody ever went through what you went through. So we'll be able to identify with the Palestinians. Been there, brothers. Done that. We'll be able to identify with Rwanda, Ethiopia, Somalia. Been there, done that. We can identify with the struggles and the suffering that the Ukrainians are going through, even though they're facing bombs. Been there, done that. And, and look how long we did it. 250 years. Oh, Lord. And what did it produce? A couple of examples right quick. A man flying through the air with a ball in his hand, spin around in the air backwards. Don't even look. Poof. Dr. J. Michael Jordan. That was produced on the plantation. Super genes. Muhammad Ali. Big guy. Moving like a little guy. Produced on the plantation. Super genes. You understand? And I'm only taking a few examples from what that hard life did on the plantation and that difficulty is passed through the genetic bloodline. Oh, it's more yet to come now. Those brilliant minds that was trying to figure things out like Carter G., Dr. C George Washington Carver, the peanut man with a thousand different uses because he was on the farm working around with the peanut and all the stuff that people are benefiting now came from that brother's uh, ingenuity, figuring things out while he was on that plantation. So much more to come. And brother Isaac M. Barnes, 13.4 billion that I mentioned last week, that came from way back there in the jeans, 39 years old, largest defense contract. And then I heard someone sent me, thank you for sending that to me, an African-American just bought the largest burger chain in the United States. Foot Ruckers is now owned by one of those descendants of the slave that was prepared through hardship in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Texas, and South Carolina. Shoo! Produced an owner of the largest burger chain. And more to come. Oprah. Oh, yeah. Mississippi. That's where she's from. Billionaire now. Just a few examples. You all probably come up with something better than what I can. Well, you'd be hard pressed with those couple I just mentioned now. To those whose hearts when Allah is mentioned, almost done, five more minutes, are filled with softness and love and humbleness. Show perseverance when hard times come. They keep up their regular salat. 
They don't stop. I was visiting one of my friends here, won't say who, bedridden. Couldn't get up to make prayer. This is about last week. And I said to him, you don't need to get out of the bed to pray if you can't get up. Allah says in the Quran, pray standing, which is what we just did, or sitting, which some of you all can't. You're getting up in age now out there, here, can't get up. Got to sit in the chair and pray. That's in the Quran. That's allowed. And say, lying down on your side, Janub, Janub, laying on the side. So I told my friend, I said, you have an allowance to pray while you're in the bed laying down. Just go through the prayer that then in your mind. He said, well, I need to make wudu. I said, make wudu in your mind. I said, if you don't, don't you have some clean wood right there that's from the earth by your bed? Rub your hands on it and make tayamum and rub your hands across your face. That's Islam. Al-Islam. Make life simple, not difficult. No, not going to extremes, understanding how to live in Musdalafa. Uh, in the middle, Husta, Ummatul Wasit, the midway community. I mean, don't go to extreme. You, you, you can't make wudu. You can't get out the bed. You can't make the salat. You can't make uh, the kada sitting, the jalsa. You can't make the sajda. You can't even make the ruku. Can't make kiyam standing and bowing. I said, my friend, make it in your mind. Go through every step of that prayer in your mind. It's a lot in the bed. Now, don't cheat. You know, y'all always have to close the door for us in America now. Y'all open that door, which the Quran opens. The Quran gives those allowances. It's like Ramadan. You don't fast if you can't. You feed somebody. So we, we allow allowances when we can't do what the religion requires of us. See? So we don't get to the extreme, just an extreme ritualism. And not understanding. Hey, this is Eid al Adha. Return to greater common sense and enlightenment. When your mind is enlightened, you don't get off in all this extreme ritualism. You understand the ritual, but if I can't perform the ritual like it should be, Allah says in the Quran, pray this way as an allowance. And when you have overcome the difficulty, go back to the formality. Allahu Akbar, beautiful religion. Keep up the regular salat and spend of your sustenance in charity. Yunfikun is the word here. This is not zakat. So there are other spending besides the cat now. Sadaka, charity from sincerity. Yunfit, spending over and beyond what's required of you, what's needed. Yeah, all kind of words for, for, for spending now. So uh, for zakat, pardon me, charity. Now, here's the verse I want to get to, this one in, in conclude, 36, 37. Verse 36. And Allah said, Just mention that on the side. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful on this Eid al Adha day. The sacrificial camels. So now they sacrifice camels back in this society. Sacrifice these camels. We have made these sacrificial camels. Sha'ir Allah as signs, listen carefully, and symbols. That's what God told Prophet Muhammad. Don't take it literally. This is a ritual. And the ritual carries powerful. I, wait a minute. That's not me saying that you all out there viewing and listening now. I'm reading that. God revealed to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam These are signs and symbols To be understood 
The sacrificial camels we have made for you are among the signs and symbols from Allah. In them is much good for you if you understand. Then pronounce the name of Allah over them as they line up for sacrifice. When they are down on their sides, that you lay them down to slaughter them after slaughter. Oh, he go to sign now. God doesn't leave us wondering what this is. Fakulu minha wa atimu. Now, if you understand it, you've got the sign. After you slaughter them, take something from their meaty, meaty, not milk. Take something from their meaty, M-E-A-T-Y, body and eat that meat because meat is for the learned. Wisdom, hikmah, milk, babies and religion. God said, no, that's that other religion. You all are in the meaty religion. They have meat too. They just don't believe in giving it to their followers. So God said to Muhammad the prophet, eat it, study it, learn it. I'm up in the second reading now. Eat that spiritual meat, intellectual meat. Yeah, you study it, you get it, you learn it, but don't be selfish. Sacrifice some of your knowledge. So you eat and you feed. Okay, example. I sacrificed the time to lay the animal down on its side. I opened the pages and laid it on its side. And I started eating. Quran. Dictionary. Imam Muhammad, Muhammad the prophet, Bible, I'm eating, I'm eating. Got to gotta feed on Juma day. I can't eat, keep all the camel to myself. God says eat and then go feed. So whatever you learn, Allah says in the Quran, what? To all the Muslims, not just to the leaders and the imams and the scholars, no, and the sheikhs and the mu'alims and the muftis, no. Go you forward. Rather you, and I'm going to give you a different translation of this. It says equip lightly or heavily. You know the verse. Go you forward. Rather you are stuffed full. <laughs> or you ate just enough. In other words, Whatever it is you've eaten from these sacrificial camels, from this knowledge, this meat that you have, take whatever you have and share it with those that don't have as much as you do. You're obligated to share whatever knowledge you have. After you have slaughtered it, draw out the impurities out of it. Bismillah, wallahu akbar. God's name, you're doing it with God's name now. Don't feed the people impurity. Don't give them corruption. Don't give them blood. Give them the clean meat. Eat you thereof and feed such as live in contentment and such as beg with due humility. Thus have we made animals and knowledge your servant subject to you in order that you may be grateful. Now, the conclusion of this. Verse 37. It is not their meat. The dabiha, the slaughter, the animal, all these are symbols and rituals. 
So God told Prophet Muhammad, don't think, now this is to clear up paganism, pagan ritual of blood sacrifice. Sacrificing animals and humans to God. Yeah, okay. But God explained it to the prophet. This is symbolism. Now, Muhammad, it is not their meat that the pagans thought, nor their blood that the pagans thought, that reaches Allah. So God told the prophet, no, what they're doing is paganism. What they did behind you is paganism. What they continue to do, sacrificing animals for God, sacrificing blood sacrifice for God. This is for God. No, it ain't. God said the meat and the blood don't reach him. You're supposed to be feeding that to somebody and get the message. But what is it that reaches God? It is not their meat nor their blood, as we conclude, that reaches Allah. Well, I can but it is your taqwa, it is your piety, it is your regardfulness of God that reaches him. He has thus made these things serve you, that you may glorify Allah for his guidance to you and proclaim the good news to all who do right. God the mighty spoke the truth as revelation to Muhammad the prophet. Thank you brothers and sisters for being here today on this wonderful Eid day and I give you the dua I gave you yesterday for the Eid al-Arfa la ilaha illallah we said that Doc, thank you for chanting this La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. There is nothing worthy of our worship, no God except God. None deserve to be worshipped but him, and we associate nothing with him. No idols, no animals. We're not pagans. We don't associate animals or people with God. We don't make any idols for God. La sharika la. Lehumuk, to him belongs all authority and power. Lehumuk wa lehul hamd, and to him belongs and is due all the praise. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir, and over the universe, and over man's affairs, and over everything, does he has the ultimate power. Eid Mubarak, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you all for joining us. Go out and enjoy your family. Uh, be careful out there going about. Celebrate. Eat a lot high. Return to great enlightenment. Three days of the celebration. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Some Muslims do it the whole week. But at least three days. Enjoy your time with your children. And those of you all who are out there, you have children, go get them some gifts. Take them to get their, their favorite play places. This is a celebration time now. The prayer is the start. And the kutbah is just a start. But we got three days of celebrations. And it's different from Ramadan because we not, not fasting 29 or 30 days. Uh, some Muslims fast yesterday because of the uh, uh, Arafah. But not fasting uh, 30, 29 or 30 days. So go out and enjoy yourself. Have fun. Be careful. Keep wearing the mask. Especially here in Duval County in Jacksonville. The exposure and the risk level is high from the CDC. Be careful. But have fun. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your family. Thank you all for joining us, American Muslim 360. Eid Mubarak. Imam Muhammad Abdullah, Birmingham Islamic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. Facebook, YouTube, and StreamYard. All of you and Muslims all over the world. Blessed Eid. Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum. Join us, inshallah, Friday for Juma prayer, 1 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Mubarak.